And Senator Mike Rounds of South Dakota joins us now. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Um, President Biden out there, obviously, on the campaign trail, as it were, not officially, uh, hitting Republicans all week on Medicare, Social Security. And he's pointing specifically to the plan that your colleague, Senator Rick Scott, Republican of Florida, released when he was leading the Senate GOP's campaign arm, which says, just to quote, all federal legislation sunsets in five years if a law is worth keeping Congress can pass it again, unquote. Do you support that plan? I kind of look at Social Security the way I would at the Department of Defense and our defense spending. We're never going to not fund uh, defense. But at the same time, we every single year, we look at how we can make it better. And I think it's about time that we start talking about Social Security and making it better. We've got 11 years before we actually see cuts start to happen to people that are on Social Security. And I think it'd be very responsible for us to do everything we can to make those funding pro programs now and the plans right now so that we don't run out of money in Social Security and that it continues to provide all the benefits that it does today. Simply looking away from it and pretending like there's no problems with Social Security is not an appropriate or responsible thing to do. So I guess my preference would be let's start managing it. And I'll just give you an example. Later on today, you're going to have folks that are very successful that are going to be around your table. Why don't you ask them whether or not the funding for their retirement comes strictly from government bonds or from, from the government itself? And don't they look at other resources uh, that help to make their, their uh, uh, retirement plans better? And, and I think we can do that if we start now on a bipartisan basis to make plans so that we've got the resources necessary, if not in basically about 11 years, and that's a heads up for a lot of people that are 50, 51, 52 years old, the, the reductions that are built in are about 24%. Yeah. A group of us are saying, look, we've got to do something about that. Let's talk about it. And there's a group of us that have been. And so this is not something that we should be talking, trying to scare people. This is something that we should be saying, let's plan now so that Social Security has a long run ahead of it, more than 75 years, and why don't we start talking about the long-term plans instead of trying to scare one another? So I, I hear you on the long-term plans, and I want to I talk about that in a second, but just to be clear about what you were just talking about, are you talking about a partial privatization of Social Security so that there is an investments in the market in addition to government bonds? Is, is that what I should understand from what you just said? More along the lines of allowing us to continue to guarantee the benefits that are there, but allow us to use other resources to make sure that they are there. And so that the individual doesn't take the risk, but rather that the federal government does. So rather than simply saying that, and, and we've got proven track record in other areas of the federal government of doing this right now, but uh, there's a group of us that have been working. I'm not the leader of the group, so I really don't want to get into a lot of the detail on it. But I really think there's a golden opportunity in, in, a, in a bipartisan way to put uh, Social Security on a long-term plan that would make it better in the future than what it is today and to assure its longevity. But you do that by managing it. You do that by actually talking about it and not you know, doing, doing dog calls every time somebody says, let's try to address managing it. And, and look, we're, we've got right now out of a $5.9 trillion federal budget, it, the legislative part of this whole thing, the Congress, actually only votes on about 1.6 to 1.7 trillion of that amount that's being spent. Wouldn't it be better if we actually tried to manage the rest of it as well and to yeah. actually be able to provide that, 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 that management tool that right now does not exist? So I hear what you're saying, and you're calling out President Biden for what you call dog calls, uh, trying to scare people. Um, but I guess the question is, didn't Senator Rick Scott give an opening? When you talk about sunsetting every program, you know how, it, it, how tough it is to pass anything through the House and Senate, uh, much less a major uh, government spending program every five years. T take a listen to what your leader, um, Republican leader Mitch McConnell, had to say about Rick Scott's plan on Kentucky radio uh, just a couple days ago. There were no plans to raise taxes on happy American people or to sunset Medicare or Social Security. So it's clearly the Rick Scott plan. It is not the Republican plan. It's just a bad idea. Uh, I think it will be a challenge for him to deal with this in his own reelection in Florida, a state with more elderly people than any other state in America. 
You've known Senator McConnell a long time. He doesn't criticize fellow Republicans very often, let alone a comment like that about Rick Scott's reelection. Are you worried that Rick Scott hurt the party with this plan and is hurting the conversation that you want to have? You know, we do want to continue the conversation in terms of how we make Medicare, Medicaid better and long term successful. I think Senator Scott had an idea that he proposed. I think the vast majority of us would say that we'd prefer to look at it in a different direction, one of managing it, as opposed to a discussion about having everything start over again. And I think that's misleading in terms of what he really intended to do. But uh, uh, look, the, the bottom line is, is Republicans want to see Social Security be successful and be improved. And, and the best way to do that is to take a look at other successful pension programs that the vast majority of us, including a lot of the folks that you're going to be talking to, would include in their portfolios. But we can do that as long as the federal government continues to make the assurances to the individuals who are looking forward to Social Security long term. But once again, in the next 11 years, we have to have a better plan in place than what we do today. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to see, an, under existing circumstances, some reductions of as much as 24% in some sort of a benefit. So let's start talking now because it's easier to fix it now than yeah. it would be five years or six years from now. And that's the message we're trying to get is, is isn't it responsible for Congress to actually say, we're going to start managing this, we're going to try right. to do our best to make it better? So do you, think, do you think that everything needs to be on the table in terms of managing it, in terms of means testing, in terms of raising the retirement age, in terms of uh, you know, reducing benefits for people who maybe financially are not as dependent upon them, and on and on? Everything needs to be talked about? I think the first thing that you do is you assure people that are currently on Social Security or that are within 15, 20 years of getting it that they're not gonna see changes in the existing benefits or programs. I think that's really important so that they can continue on the plans that they've got for retirement. But second of all, you have to do a little bit of looking at what longevity looks like and whether or not people, if they're living longer, do we have to plan to make sure that we've got the resources to be able to pay for those benefits long term. There are some natural things that we've done in the past. Uh, we've looked at moving up by a couple of months the, uh, the, the time period in which full benefits start. That's possibly something that we could look at in the future. There may be some possibilities of changing the amount of income which is subject to Social Security taxes. I think those are reasonable uh, discussions to talk about because right now we have some increases there built into the existing program. But let's not talk about significant stuff until we actually look at what the other alternatives are. We think that there are possibilities out there of long-term success without scaring people and without tearing apart the system and without reducing benefits. But it requires management and it requires actually looking at and making things better. Look, I, in South Dakota, we've got the South Dakota Retirement Plan. It's one of the best plans in the entire nation. But every single year, we try to make it better. We try to mm -hmm. do the internal mechanics of it so that we actually make it better than it was the year before. Right. And I'll bet you, you can't find anybody in South Dakota that has that plan that isn't satisfied with the direction that we've done to make it better each year. An important conversation. Uh, Senator Mike Rounds, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you.